Good morning. We're on the phone today. I've left the GoPro in the office and I can't be bothered to go and get it. But look at this. Sunshine. We have sunshine in Devon. Um, just waiting for John to come down with the handler. I need to load some silage into this. It's Monday morning. So we're just getting all the feeding and bedding done. Um, we still need to fix the wagon. That is a job for this week. Um, we've eaten into the silage pit we opened last week a little bit now already. So yeah, my prediction of only using a couple bays might be miles out because we used a bay already, albeit it's the slope. So there's not actually that much there. But it looks like nice stuff now that we've got into it. Um, obviously silage, it's all about the smell. Really sweet. I'm sure the cows will enjoy it because that's what they're getting fed. But um, yeah, I'm just waiting. I've done the bedding up. So I just need some silage putting in there with the handler. Normally we've got the loader tractor here as well, but a fence of fill was in this morning and he's gone off with that one to collect some bales. We've only got the one machine for doing loading. And John's running around picking up dung and trying to load the wagon, trying to load me with straw and silage as well. So it just takes a bit of time. Just whilst we're waiting, you try and tell me that that is not a good looking tractor. Oh, look at the wing mirrors. Beautiful. Here's something you guys don't see every day. Is that a dung midden? There's a fair bit in here. If you bear in mind, we've emptied probably that much that's there down to our hard standing on the other farm already. And when you consider that all the sheds are full of dung as well at the moment, there is a lot of dung there. There's a lot of dung to be shifted. It's gonna take a long time. As you can see, the stock box is on the 155. Took some fat cattle in market last week. Um, that got rid of a few um, head of cattle that we were feeding inside, so that's good hopefully before too long possibly even this week we will get some cattle cows and calves outside because it's the time of year it's the middle of march well it's the 18th of march today they need to be going out really we got a lot of cattle in the sheds it's just been so wet as everybody knows but yeah we're gonna go and walk some ground and hopefully get some outside we found a bowman we just rolled the sheep back a bit on the pit he's gonna load us up here with some uh, silage Look at the sun coming out. Oh, lovely. It does make a bit of mess, but um, we haven't got much choice at the moment. So John will put another grab in there. We then need to get big boots out with the wagon um, because we need to mix up a load more sheep blend. The sheep are on a mix of sugar beet and Nova Pro, which is like a um, very high percent protein. I think it's from rapeseed. We mix it one to three, or three to one, sugar beet three, rapeseed one. Um, and they've run out over the weekend. So once John's done this, he's gonna stick some in the wagon mixing up. And then what we do is fill up a hopper and then just take it out with a bucket every morning for the sheep. Our genius knows no bounds. Absolute win that is, that saves a trip. So that in there is the sugar beet. So there's one ton of that. We mix it three to one sugar beet and uh, Nova Pro. So we'll put 330 kilos of that in. Afterwards, mix it all up in the wagon and then just chuck it out into this big bucket. Everything's just in the right places. I'm walking along here. Uh, and then it goes into a hopper and the guys take it out in a bucket every day to feed the sheep. Just cut a little hole in the bottom so we can still use the bag for bagging up plastic or whatever. Perfect. Onwards. Second bag in. Got that one empty out. I obviously didn't quite hit the middle of this bag. Right, there we go. So that is the energy for the ration. We'll go and get the Nova Pro, which is the protein. I should say somewhere near a ton. 1.02. Right, we now have the Nova Pro, which we had to bucket out by hand into there. So hopefully that's somewhere near 330 kilos. If it's any less, we'll have to get a bit more. If it's too much, it's too much. So the scale says 1010 at the moment. 
We want to go to 1340. We're about 40 kilos short, apparently. So it now says 1295, so we need about another 45 kilos, which John has gone to get. The problem with this stuff is it ends up on the flight. So what we'll do in a minute is once John's put the last little bit in, is stop this, put it in a um, thousand speed and rev it right up and all the flights will clean themselves and then it will mix in properly then. The reason we do it this way instead of put, putting it in their um, TMR is that we know every morning they've had the exact amount they need. I know in a TMR you should have the same mouthful every time. Um, but if like when we feed them the bales down there, if the bales last more than say two days that we feed them enough concentrate for, Technically, they're getting less concentrate than they need, or whatever. So, by doing this and putting it in a hopper every morning, the ewes get exactly what they need, um, fed to them every morning, um, which keeps everyone happy. I didn't bother waiting for John in the end, I went and put it in fast speed myself. You see now the flies are clean, or cleaner, so it's not all just stuck to them. So it's now down there mixing. Do you want to bring the last little bit in? And then we'll uh, stick the bucket underneath the belt here very carefully empty it into the bucket. Perfect! Right, got the last of that in the bucket there now. John's gonna put that in the hopper. I'm gonna go and let the dairy shed out so they can feed. And then we'll be uh, stopping for a bit of breakfast. Right, we're gonna come and feed these cows down here that got a little bit of silage left in that pen. Most of them have uh, eaten all their stuff up. We've got an escaped calf. What are you doing? Um, but what we're actually gonna do is just put a load of bales down. We wanna clear our bale stack on the other farm. So we're just gonna line up bales for the cows and calves. So that pen there and those pens down there. These guys get fed a bit of protein. So we'll have to do a mix for them still. Right now, what pen do you belong in? Hey. So there's bale number one. We'll probably put three along here. These guys are getting upset because they want feeding. I'm um, trying to split one along there. It's a popular way of feeding, especially in Ireland. If you've got a shed like this with a feed rail, just literally filling it up with bales and seeing how long they last. Here he comes with another bale. Look at that one compared to that one. Hell of a different. It just shows that perhaps this one was made beside the hedge where it didn't get quite as much drying. You can see how slumped that bale is compared to that one that's nearly completely round still and the other one that John's just brought in he's got two more down there so we'll put another one here and one on the end and that'll keep those guys happy for a little while then so John's just gone back for more bales we had a chat and we're just going to fill this side up as well so we can put three bales for these two pens of cows and calves there these fat cattle they're going to get a bale as well and then we've got two pens of cows down there they'll get a bale each so these guys will still get clamp silage and a bit of um, Nova Pro because they are still growing. They are the maiden heifers that will see the bull. Um, normally we go first of May, but we are toying with the idea of probably delaying a month um, just so we can calve hopefully next year and then turn out a bit quicker. Because at the minute we've got a shed full of, well, we've got cows and calves everywhere and it's just about coming nice this week, the weather. And it'd be nice if we started calving say three weeks ago instead of seven or eight weeks ago we started carving and turning out a bit quicker um, i know every year is different last year we could have turned out by now but it's just the way it is so um hopefully by either the end of this week or early next week some of these guys will be out in the fields does that sound good calf you want to go out in the field oh and there we have it a shed full of bales look at that now, John's gone to start a mix for these guys. Once we've fed them, they'll be happy as well. I'm gonna go up top yard. John's gonna drop the bucket beside our scrap pile. We're gonna have a sort through that and try and clear up a load of scrap. I said it the entire winter. We wanna try and reorganize the sheds a bit to get a bit more stuff in. Um, so we're gonna finally try and do some of that. Here comes young Joe. Quoted as saying, I'll let you tip it in there because I'll miss the trailer. I don't think you can miss it. Well, that was noisy. That trailer must be getting towards being full. Let's have a look here. Ah, oh, plenty of room yet. Oh, geez, there's a bit of water in it. 
Need to get rid of that. That's full of water. Absolutely full of water. We've had a bit of a tidy up here. This is the keep pile. More scrap. Uh, keep, keep, keep. Scrap, keep, keep, keep. Don't know. The last time I filmed John's ass, I got 80,000 views, so. <laughs> this can only end well, I think. Well, I thought I would come down to the bale shed as it's now known on my way home. The heifers here are happy, they've got their mix. You happy cows? Look at all your bales. That will last them quite a little while. I think that's a good idea, that. Props to Bowman. Calves have got nice food as well. So yes, we spent the afternoon tidying up the workshop and the surrounding area. We've um, cleared a whole pile of scrap that has been there ever since I've started working here. So it's been there four years and it has completely transformed the place. We've got a whole nother bay of storage now. I'll go around and show you. So I doubt you can all remember what it looked like, but that area there was just a massive pile of scrap. So we've sorted through all of it. And what we want to keep is in that pile. It's just some bits for the slurry tanker and a fender or wheel large for one of the tractors. Everything else has gone in the red trailer, ready for the scrap man. Look out of the window to your left, which is horribly dirty. Let's sort that out. You see some of our arable ground. We still haven't got around to doing anything to it. Um, we have got some spring oat seed now to go in there. It was going to be winter beans. It has just been so wet um, that we've not been able to do anything at all. So hopefully in the next, I don't know, 10 days, we can sort of start doing some field work. We've got a dry week now. Um, so what we're hoping is if it stays dry this week, next week, we'll start doing things like spreading fertilizer on silage ground, which is late, but you know, we, we've had to wait. We can't, can't possibly go out and just start making a mess because there's no point in doing that. But get things like fertilizer out, we can sort of start to make a plan of whether we need to do any sort of cultivations to the arable ground here or whether we just spray it off and let Tom direct drill it and that sort of thing. We've got cows we obviously want to kick outside. They could probably go out now, some of the fields. Bruce walked around all the grazing ground away from the farm today and that was not too bad. Some of it's still really wet. Um, but some of it would take a small amount of cattle so if we give it another week to dry up. Uh, hopefully next week we'll start kicking cows out properly. We've got the barley on the away ground that needs its first dose of nitrogen, of nitrogen, I can't even speak. But again, it's a bit touch and go. And whereas that could really do with it sooner rather than later, if we go in there now and make a mess on the first pass, then it's messed up for the rest of the year. And um, for every time I want to drag the sprayer through there or anything like that. So yeah, we are agonizingly close to being able to do field work. I can feel it coming, it's just, just out of reach. Carving really slowed down over the weekend. There weren't any born at all. Um, we have had one born this afternoon, so I think um, Fencer Phil ended up winning the little in-house bet we have. He guessed 16 cows left to calf uh, on whatever the date was that Mel chose when we were doing it, and we had somewhere near 20, so Fencer won the prize money. We've also got another Josh down on the farm at the moment. He actually works up at um, Harpenden on the other Rothamsted farm. Um, so he's come down for a bit of a change of scenery for the, the next two weeks. See some of him soon. We've got bull fertility testing coming up. I'm actually away tomorrow TB testing um, back my place. So the cattle that I've taken on with Abby and um, Phil and Liz. Um, so I'm there tomorrow afternoon. We've got bull fertility testing on Wednesday. We're going to have a bit of a discussion about letting some calves out because we've got a piece of ground away from the farm that's quite dry and there's a lot of grass on it. So whether we put the calves that we're gonna put on these um, grazing trials on it for a bit and sort of semi train them to electric fence because they'll need to be trained to it. See, there's lots of things in the pipeline. We're still having to be a bit patient with weather, but it's just the way it is. So I'm now home. Um, Abby's actually taken Gus out with a friend for a walk. The things you love to see, potatoes. That is a promising start to the evening. I'm hoping those are gonna end up roasted and in my belly. But that is where we're gonna end the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you hadn't already seen, then we've now got these quarter zips. I really like these actually, they look sort of quarter zips on our um, merch store for sale. There's a link in the description. This door is opening itself. 
I believe it is the cat. It was the cat. But yeah, they're for sale. They're down in the um, store. There's a link for it down below. Um, we've not got many. I think we've only got five left because we've already sold a few forward. So if you want one, go and check it out. Be quick, whatever. Uh, if you'd like to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel while you're there, that is awesome as well. Thank you very much to everyone who has done recently. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.